السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters the 27th of Ramadan is a very very important date and the reason I say this is because of the narration of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him wherein he speaks about searching for the night of decree the night of power or the night of decree in the Arabic language Laylatul Qadr when we search for it the idea is to be able to worship Allah through a number of days not just one but as human beings we would like to know you, what is the night I want to know you see we have a bit of impatience so people ask when is this night exactly the true answer is it's in Ramadan right so it has to be in Ramadan you can't come out in Dhul Hijjah and say hey we, we've got to search for Laylatul Qadr because the days of Dhul Hijjah are indeed very very auspicious like the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says there are no days in which good deeds are more loved by Allah than the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيهن أحب الله من هذه العشر. Those are the days of the Hijjah. The first ten days of the Hijjah are the most powerful days in the lunar calendar. But the nights, we're talking about the nights. The most powerful nights are the nights of Ramadan, indeed, without a doubt. And from them, they are powerful nights towards the second half of Ramadan. In the last 10 nights, there is a greater chance that Laylatul Qadr is in those 10, the ones we are in right now. And then he says, Search for the night of decree in the last, in the odd nights from the last 10 nights of Ramadan. How do I search for the night? by engaging in extra acts of worship, by seeking the forgiveness of Allah, by praising Allah, by reading some Quran, by engaging in more salah or prayer, by doing my taraweeh, by enjoying that, by not indulging in that which is prohibited, especially on those nights. You and I know prohibitions are prohibitions, be it in Ramadan or out of Ramadan. But what is of importance is when Allah has given the value to a certain night more than others to do something wrong in that particular night would be even worse. In Surah Al Hajj, Allah speaks about those who ensure the sanctity of that which Allah has given value to. That is a sign of the piety of the heart. When Allah Almighty tells you this is an auspicious occasion, this is a blessed place to do wrong in that particular place or on that particular occasion intentionally would be damaging to our belief and faith in Allah Almighty. So my brothers and sisters to search for the night is very important. We've already brought it down to the odd nights from the last 10 nights. That does not mean it didn't go by already. Someone asked me the other day, you know, the odd nights are different from country to country, from place to place. Trust me, Allah knows that the time of your suhoor and the time of your iftar is the most blessed time for the day. And he knows that it's different timings, even in different towns and different cities. How he does it, he knows best. You just follow the instruction. That's how it works. When Allah says there is an hour on a Friday wherein it is or there is a moment on a Friday wherein the dua or supplication that anyone makes is answered immediately. The Friday and the timings are different from place to place. The same applies to the time of the Hajjud, early morning, that pre-dawn time that is most blessed when Allah is calling out to all of us who is there, who is going to ask me or seek forgiveness from me that I can give them or forgive them. And you and I know the time in Australia is different from that in America and that in Europe is different from that in Africa. How does Allah do it? He knows best. He knows best. Do not despair and don't let things baffle you that Allah has kept the knowledge of himself. You need to understand if Allah says 
It is this way, it is that way. Subhanallah. And the same applies to everything else. Like I gave you the example of the starting and the ending of the fast on a daily basis, the prayer times on a daily basis, and so on. So if Allah Almighty has kept you in a place where the odd nights for me, here they are. He wants you to engage in worship. He wants you to seek his forgiveness. He wants you to spend that time in a way that you have not spent before. He, in a positive way, obviously. So he wants you to do goodness. We are gathered here because we would like to change our lives primarily. When you go for Hajj and you come back from Hajj and you are still involved in your negative or bad ways and habits, that means you might have fulfilled your duty of the Hajj, but you did not achieve the broader benefit of the Hajj. The same applies to Ramadan. The same applies to Laylatul Qadr. Although Laylatul Qadr is inside Ramadan, it is one night that has the value of the whole of the rest of Ramadan and beyond. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. That night of Qadr, that Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree is more powerful or better than a thousand months. And that's why if you look at the narrations of what you're supposed to be achieving from Ramadan, you're supposed to be achieving forgiveness. And if you look at the narrations of Laylatul Qadr itself has the same forgiveness. Listen to what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Man saama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban. Do you know what the rest of the hadith is? Ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi. Whoever fasts the entire month of Ramadan with faith and conviction, expecting a reward from Allah, all that person's previous sins will be wiped out. That's what Allah says. And then he goes on to say, وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever stands in prayer at night in Ramadan through the month with conviction and faith, expecting a reward and hoping for it from Allah, Allah will wipe out all that person's previous sins. Wiped out. What was that for? That was for standing in prayer at night throughout Ramadan. And it's not easy. When Allah tells us to do something, it's not going to be easy. If the reward is massive, it's got to be a difficult task. Allah alone makes it easy for us. If you were to try and fast outside of Ramadan, it won't be as simple as inside Ramadan. Because Allah's kept a blessing in this month where when we do it collectively and every one of us is here, mashallah, tabarakallah, you will definitely find that Allah's created ease for us. My brothers, my sisters, for one night, Allah tells us the same thing through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man qama laylatal qadri imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi. Whoever stands at night in prayer for laylatul qadr with full conviction and faith in Allah, hoping for a reward from Allah, Allah will grant them total forgiveness. All that they've done previously in terms of sin will be wiped out and forgiven for what? One night of prayer for Allah. So we are searching for the night. Tonight could be the night. We're searching for it. We are here already from Salatul Asr. And mashallah, we want to worship Allah. We want to obey Him. Minimum is we will not sin on this particular night. May Allah protect us from sin, minor or major. May Allah help us so we can read a little bit of Quran. The beauty today all of us have the apps on our phones. All of us have the apps on our phones with the Quran. Am I right or wrong? There we go. If I am right, why don't we use those? You have a moment or two where, for example, before iftar, just after suhoor, early morning, whenever in the evening, as you are waiting between the salawat and the prayers, why don't you open app and read a little bit of what you are supposed to be reading in terms of Quran? You can do that. That might be the moment when Allah is giving out his the prizes to the people of forgiveness and you are engaged in the worship of Allah in one way or another. This is not a night where we can sit on our phones and socialize. This is not a night that we can sit on our phones and waste our time. This is not a night where we sit with each other in a lounge and we say it might be Laylatul Qadr and as you're sipping your shisha, you say Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. Imagine, that's not how the night of decree should be spent. 
this is a serious night where we make resolutions we change our lives if you were to leave tonight with your heart having moved and your life having changed good news to you I pray Allah includes us from among those whom we are taught about when he says May Allah include us in those who will be forgiven completely. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, a special occasion. Here we are so many of us. Do you know that Allah Almighty expects us to look for this beautiful night and the worship we are supposed to be engaging in, not just on one night. You still have other nights. You still have the 29th coming. You have the 28th as well. You have so many other nights. I don't want to speak about what's gone already because I'm hoping that at least we can get it tonight by the will of Allah Almighty. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. My brothers and sisters, having gathered in large numbers in this beautiful, beautiful venue, we will need a lot of patience tonight. We will need to reach out to others. We will need not to be selfish. We will need to share what we have, inshallah. We will need to make space for others. We will need to give and take. That's all part of your test from Allah. Are you part of an ummah? If Allah wanted you to be an individual all alone without interaction, he would never have made compulsory the congregational prayer. He would have never made compulsory the Friday prayer that you have to attend no matter what. May Allah Almighty accept it from us. When you're going to interact with people, naturally you will have differences. Naturally, some might have character and conduct not in line with yours. Whoever may be right, whoever may be wrong, you have to have a big heart. You have to improve yourself. You have to look within yourself. What can I do to improve the way I speak to my family members? The temper that I have, I get so angry. I abuse my family and those who interact with me. I am not such a good person. If you can pick that up, the next stage is how are you going to rectify it? Are you serious about rectification? Are you really serious that you are going to learn to smile a little bit more to help the, those around you? Not, not to be that selfish, to be able to share what you have with others. Look at the night of decree. What are the acts of worship you want to engage in tonight? Let me, let me tell you the pillars of Islam. Besides Hajj, I want to do all the others. So my Shahada, I keep repeating. First pillar of Islam, conviction. And I believe there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger of Allah. Secondly, I'm going to pray my five daily prayers and I'm going to make sure tonight I'm engaged in extra acts of prayer. May Allah accept it from us. That's the next pillar of Islam already done. Then the fasting, Allah Almighty has kept this in the month of Ramadan so that you can engage in the pillar of Islam known as fasting. Had this night been outside of Ramadan, you would not be able to do the, the compulsory fast of Ramadan, subhanAllah. But here we are, we are fasting in the month of Ramadan. The only exception, those who have been granted from Allah Almighty, the exception, those are the ones who have that. Besides that, we are supposed to be fasting. May Allah Almighty make it easy for all of us. Then we have a charity and a zakat, that which you are supposed to give from what Allah gave you. Allah speaks about the poor and Allah speaks about the needy. And Allah says, <laughs> Give them from the wealth of Allah that Allah gave you. So Allah's made you a temporary custodian of the wealth that you have in your pocket. It's temporary. It's going to go. It's going to be depleted. You either waste it or you use it wisely. And when you're using it wisely, you either use it yourself or you happen to expand and use on others. The winners are those who can reach out to others who are in greater need than them. Allah loves that quality so much. When you have and you know someone else does not have, to reach out to them may not be that difficult. But when you don't have so much and you see someone who has even less than you and then you can reach out, that is actually a quality that Allah praises in the Quran that was found among the Ansar of Medina Munawwara. Allah 
Allah speaks about the Ansar and He says, they give preference to others in things they themselves are in desperate need of. I need this so much, but that person needs it even more than me. So here I am giving it away. That's not an easy quality. Allah says, whoever, whoever is saved from the miserliness of their own nafs and themselves, they are the truly successful. They are the truly successful. So successful are those who give. Tonight we will have opportunity to give whatever you would like to give. Do you know why I'm encouraging you to give? Because every night we should be trying to engage in all these pillars of Islam. It's obviously not easy and it's not possible to engage in the last one. But on a voluntary level, some are fortunate that they were able or are able to do that. Those who are in Makkah right now, they can do a voluntary minor pilgrimage known as Umrah. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, whoever makes the Umrah in Ramadan, Allah will reward them equivalent to that of a Hajj. That's according to one narration. So we ask Allah Almighty to reward us. We ask Allah Almighty to grant us. Imagine all your pillars of Islam in one day and you're going to be engaging in them. Surely that's the night of power, the night of decree. May Allah soften our hearts. My brothers, sisters, it is time to quit sin. It is time to quit our bad ways. It is time to turn to Allah. Has the time not come? Has the time not come for those who believe to soften their hearts towards the remembrance of Allah and not away from it, my brothers and sisters? Has the time not come for those who believe to soften their hearts to humble their hearts towards Allah and the remembrance of Allah and whatever he has revealed in terms of the truth, the Quran. We need to soften our hearts towards Allah, not away from Allah. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Say that supplication often, O oh Allah, the turner of the hearts, turn my heart towards your deen, your religion, your faith and belief towards goodness, towards obedience. Oh Allah, the turner of the hearts, turn my heart towards you and not away from you. That's a powerful dua. Don't underestimate the value of supplication. My brothers, my sisters, every day we ask Allah to guide us straight path. <laughs> Every day we repeat that so many times. Guide us to the straight path because guidance is in the hands of Allah. We have an evening such as this, a night auspicious given by Allah, such as these nights of Ramadan. My brothers, they are not meant to go past just like that. My dear sisters, this is a night of resolutions for the sake of Allah. If you've been weak in something, strengthen yourself tonight. It's the night of power. If you've been weak in quitting something you really want to quit and you know you have to quit this is the night of power this is the night of decree you have to do something tonight it cannot remain for years on end you don't know whether you're going to see the next few days subhanallah you don't know if you're going to see another ramadan and like i say no one from amongst us has a total guarantee that tonight is definitely the night but we're looking for it we're searching for it while we are searching for it, if that has moved you already, it's beneficial for you. It will better. It will be better for you than your entire life. If hearts have been softened by Allah, they will be softened when we reach out to others. Today we are fasting, mashallah. We have not eaten for hours. We have not drunk anything for hours. Subhanallah. And we are seated here all together. There is almost pin drop silence when we were doing Salatul Asr earlier. And I'm sure there will be pin drop silence later as well. No one would ever imagine that there are thousands of people right here, right now in front of me. But that's Allah. He's given us a calmness in Ramadan. The condition of my heart is different from outside of Ramadan. Seize the opportunity. They say, make hay while the sun shines. Subhanallah. We ask Allah to grant us ease during these days of hardship. And we ask Allah to grant us softening during these days of auspiciousness that he has given us and the nights in particular. 
my brothers, my sisters. If everyone is rushing towards Allah, don't be the only few left out. Everyone is rushing towards Allah. I've just come in from Makkah to Mukarramah and I can tell you when I see the thousands of people circumambulating the Kaaba in Tawaf and I look at them and from among them are the famous and those who are not known, the wealthy and those who are poor, the influential and those who have no influence, those who have few problems, those who have big problems, the healthy and those who don't have good health, those who've lost loved ones and those who haven't, those who are there for in order to cry for Allah to have mercy on them for something or another. And you have those who may not have had so many problems in their lives. Everyone is there to please Allah. And I feel like one small, minute, insignificant worshiper of Allah doing the same thing, running around the Kaaba like a little child, searching for goodness, searching for the help of Allah. And if, if I am not going to be there doing the same thing, it's me who has lost out. The same applies to us tonight. If you are not going to seek the forgiveness of Allah, if you're not going to change your life, it's you who's lost out. The others are all doing that anyway. Why should I lose out? For what? Everyone is trying to mend their ways. Everyone is seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, forgive us collectively tonight. Allahumma inna ka afuun tu hibbul afwa fa'fu anna. Ameen. My brothers, my sisters, May Allah Almighty have mercy on us. When we see others, we are very quick to judge people. We don't know their connection with Allah. Perhaps they cry at night to seeking the forgiveness of Allah. And we are busy pointing fingers at them, not realizing they are closer to Allah than we ever were. We have not yet tasted the sweetness of Iman. And here they are enjoying the fruits of faith, even though they may be in greater difficulty and hardship than yourself and myself. Sometimes Allah makes our lives easy. That is a test from Allah. Are you going to drift away from him or are you going to be more steadfast when Allah has given you a good job and a good family and good conditions and good situations? That is a test from Allah for you. Are you going to appreciate it or are you going to turn away from Allah? Is or are the gifts of Allah upon you drifting away, making you drift away from Allah? If that's the case tonight, we need to change that. A true gift is that which brings you closer to Allah. Otherwise, even when you get everything this world has to offer, it does not necessarily mean that Allah is pleased with you. Allah's given Fir'aun and Qarun and Allah's destroyed them. The Pharaoh had more than you can imagine. Qarun, Allah Almighty describes the keys to his treasures were so heavy that it would be difficult for a group of men to carry only the keys. Imagine what he must have had. What do you have? And you and I think we're a big deal. And Allah says, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضَ Because he was ungrateful, Qarun, we caused the earth to open and swallow him and his entire household out, gone. Sudden, Look at what's happening across the globe in terms of disaster, natural disaster or man-made, whatever it might have been, something caused by man, warfare and so on. We ask Allah to grant us peace, stability, security, serenity, more than anything else, conviction and faith. My brothers, we have no guarantee that we're going to be sitting in goodness and we're going to be sitting in whatever we have been blessed by Allah. If we are going to turn away, Allah says, we can take that away from you at any moment. So therefore, I want to know what's the way of keeping what I have. How can I keep what I have and get more? Whatever I have in terms of worldly life, I have my family members, I have goodness, I have a decent job, I have a fair amount of money, for example, I have a fair amount of whatever other luxury, not luxuries, but goodness. Okay. And some go into the point of luxuries. Okay. How do I keep it? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, Allah tells us in the Quran how to keep that. Allah says, Wa idha rabbukum la shakartum la azidannakum. It's like an announcement from Allah that if you are going to be thankful in the true sense, we will grant you increase. What is thankfulness in the true sense? Obey the instructions of Allah. 
and stay away to the best of your abilities from that which is displeasing to Allah. Wherever you have faltered, turn to Allah very quickly, very quickly, because you and I are human beings. We can falter, we can fall. We may fall into sin like our forefather Adam fell into. Exactly what Allah told him not to do, he did. But the difference between him and those who are not interested in the relationship with Allah, he sought forgiveness instantly. And some don't bother seeking forgiveness. That's why Allah speaks about it in the Quran. He says, those who have wronged themselves, if they remember Allah immediately and seek forgiveness immediately and regret their deed and promise not to, uh, not to do that again. For example, Allah Almighty says, for them is paradise. Those are the ones whom we've prepared paradise for. Imagine. So when you sin, it doesn't mean you've lost paradise. You still have hope for as long as you're alive and you're going to seek the forgiveness of Allah and change your ways. Allah says, those are the ones whom we will grant paradise to. So we ask Allah to grant us a turning point and we ask Allah to open our doors and we ask Allah Almighty to accept us this evening for all our acts of worship. May Allah bless us all. May Allah soften our hearts so that we can love one another, so that we can stand up for one another, so that we can support one another, so that we can help one